Welcome, I'm Antonin Antosh, and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. In the very beginning of 2018, 73 Ukrainian hostages, both servicemen and civilians, previously held in the occupied territories of Luhansk and Donetsk regions, were released. This is the largest number in the history of the conflict in the Donbass. Most of them have spent over a year in captivity and suffered psychological and physical torture and unbearable living conditions. What are the needs of those people now and other any state programs in Ukraine to take care about the citizens. To discuss these questions, we're joined in the studio today by Vyacheslav Lichachev. He is the coordinator on documentation of human rights violations at charitable foundation Vostok SOS. Hello, Vyacheslav, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. So, you recently have held a press conference uh, raising the issue on the needs and the problems of people released from captivities. What are those needs? People who were in captivity for for years and most of people who mm -hmm. were uh, f uh, who uh, come to freedom on the uh, end of the previous year were in captivity from a year to three years mm -hmm. uh, so uh, those people who were you know uh, totally right in um, unbelievable conditions who were tortured, uh, who were in a very um, bad psychological situation. So the first thing, of what course, did they need? Of course, they uh, need, uh, first of all, medical and psychological uh, assistance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say that the state, the government, uh, learned this lesson from the previous um, exchange uh, uh, process and uh, now for this big exchange of the end of the previous year, uh, the uh, government um, gave uh, the, those people medical assistance. Uh, they have possibility uh, for a medical assistant mm -hmm. in Fiafania um, medical uh, clinic near Kiev, and uh, the special. Uh, psychological aid also was possible for them. And the specialists mm -hmm. were uh, previously learned, um, uh, especially for this situation, um, from uh, our American and Israeli specialists who taught them how to how to deal with the specific problems of those people. Uh, but uh, if we speak not about their uh, urgent medicine uh, needs, mm -hmm. those people, they have totally ruined their uh, routine social life. Most of them were from the territories which now are occupied. Uh, they Wait a lost second. their uh, work. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. We we'll just clarify that the government of Ukraine does get uh, very much involved in the bringing those people released from captivity back to life. Uh, has that changed since 2014? Is the Ukrainian government more active now? Yes, and uh, this positive dynamic is very uh, important. Mm -hmm. It's important to mention that there is a positive dynamic because in 2014-2015, where the, the very process of exchange was um, chaotic, and people, especially civilians, uh, they just uh, come to freedom with, with nothing and nobody meet them and uh, government uh, just didn't know what to do with them. And because what happens according now? to the legislation, there is no specific, uh, specific official um, status of the civilians mm -hmm. who were uh, captured. Uh, now uh, the uh, government understand that not only um, members of uh, military forces, but also civilians uh, have uh, those needs, special needs of uh, medic and psychological mm -hmm. assistance. And uh, now uh, there is a decision uh, that uh, the government will uh, give them a kind of um, um, uh, compensation. Are there any special uh, programs to get those people back on track, psychologically uh, and physically? Uh, uh, they uh, have, they, they had uh, this medical and psychological assessment in a very first stage uh, after they came uh, from the uh, occupied territories. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, now uh, there is a very uh, difficult progress 
uh, process of implementation of the decisions of the government, because uh, according to the government decision, they uh, will have um, some money compensation. They uh, will have some help with uh, uh, apartments with um, uh, Ling, because okay. most of them are most of them lost their own homes, their own flats, on occupied territories. Uh, but uh, when we go to the local administrations where people are now, uh, they have no understanding uh, what practical steps they could to do because there is that no is what clear I was asking. process. Are there clearly uh, clear programs created uh, and signed by the government that are uh, aimed at helping those people to get back on track psychologically, physically, uh, in terms of getting a new job, in terms of getting their social life back? At this very moment, uh, no, there is no such okay. kind of road map. Uh, mm -hmm. what to do, which is clear for any kind of uh, governmental institutions but are and we local on bodies. on the path to get some, uh, to organize the, them? The um, possible step is implementation of a leg special legislation about their official status, which is now discussing in uh, our mm -hmm. parliament, uh, because according to our legislation, there is uh, just n um, no such kind of uh, 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 official category, who, who them, civilians who were captured by the um, paramilitary uh, groups We have a in war going territories. on in the territory of Ukraine for three years and we don't know how to call the people, how to give the people the uh, proper status. Exactly. For three years. Exactly. But okay. that is not uh, the um, the only case because uh, all right, only now, according to the new presidential law about um, so-called uh, reintegration or reoccupation of Denmark, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it is uh, the very beginning of creation the legal system, uh, which um, make possible the, the legal understanding the whole situation in the East because a uh, major of the Ukrainian legislation is the legislation of a peaceful time which is totally um, useless for this uh, very specific situation. So does this mean that uh, those people who were held in captivity and then freed from capt captivity will get the help eventually but it's going to happen over the course of years? And what about now? Uh, sometimes local administrations from local budget uh, gave them uh, some assistance. Sometimes no. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not uh, systematically work. Uh, but again, the only way to change the situation is to change the legislation. In, but in general, what are the, uh, the first core steps that need to be made uh, for the person who has been released from the captivity? After their emerging medical assistant, uh, they uh, need uh, some uh, steps for resocialization. How, how uh, they, do we achieve that? They need to steps for reintegration to the society. How do society. we achieve that? How do we achieve this re uh, they, resocialization? They need to find job. They need to find place where to live. Uh, well, clearly, they cannot do it on their own. Who can assist them? Uh, theoretically. Government, the state, practically, it's more civil society is active mm -hmm. on this field. And there are some charitable foundations, volunteer groups who uh, help them with their first place to live, uh, their, to f help them to find a job and um, help them practically to, to buy food because mm -hmm. they were um, come to freedom with with nothing, literally. Okay, uh, it's been some time since the last, the, the, the biggest uh, prisoner swamp in the history of the conflict in the eastern Ukraine, when 72 people have been released. How do they feel now? Do, do, does the government or are there any organizations who actually keep track of how those people are going ahead with their lives? Well, we are, our charitable foundation is in contact with um, maybe half of the people who mm -hmm. were um, Part of this big exchange, big exchange, and uh, what uh, what do they feel? First of all, they happy to be free, because course, freedom clearly. is the most um, expensive yeah. thing in our, our life. Uh, uh, second, of course, they 
have some social and psychological problems. And uh, mm -hmm. there is a psychological, um, not, a, not a kind of therapy, but uh, just a permanent uh, assistant because they just need to feel that they are not alone in this very uh, hard situation for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, they um, help and assistant in some practical uh, issues are also important, but most of all, they need just to feel that uh, they, that, that the society uh, still remember about them, mm -hmm. because it was a great national holiday when they um, come to freedom, and uh, sometimes they have feeling that after two three months, both government and society. Uh, just forget about them mm -hmm. and uh, to make them uh, feel uh, that they are not alone in their difficult situation, difficult social situation, economic situation is extremely important for them. Okay. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this information with us. Thank you. That was Vyacheslav Likachev from Vostok SOS Charitable Foundation. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned with UATV.